What individual thing has been the most impactful so far? Stephen Colbert. He made fun that our product was AP milk, and he spent about a minute basically making fun of us. It was fantastic. Adam Lowry, co-founder of Method and Ripple Foods. You ready to answer some questions? Absolutely. Right. Bring it on. What did you learn from Methods that's helping you with Ripple? You know, I learned a lot about how customers work, like retailers, and what their needs are. It's it's brutal in the grocery space. And these people have really hard jobs. And if you can create a brand that helps them get their job done, you can be a lot more successful. What made you come up with such an esoteric name? Yeah, forever this category has been about like what nut do we want to make milk from? And we've kind of run out of nuts to make milk from. And that's not a really interesting brand proposition anyway. Like what, what do you do when almonds go out of fashion and your name is almond something, right? What we wanted to do is create a brand that was about the little things you do every day and how they make you healthier and make the world a little bit better. And so Ripple is really a play on that, on the ripple effect, those little things we do every day and how they add up. Do you find that it might be a little too heady for people? I agree, you don't need to be called something nut, but ripple and the ripple effect and how it affects things, it feels like too much for me to absorb at shelf. Yeah, maybe, maybe at first, but people said the same thing about method and that turned out pretty well. So they, you know, people thought, well, you know, that's not a cleaning product name. It needs to be Whammo or you know, Windex or something like that. But with Ripple, I think people eventually, they, they understand that it's about, we're trying to have a ripple effect on people's lives and on the world at large. And once you start to, to be a consumer of the brand, you start to get it. Why is the font so hard to read? Yeah, so straight up, not that easy to read. Um, a lot of people, the reason well, I asked that question, oh, yeah. a lot of people think it looks like nipple. And, uh, okay, uh, no, no. That I, is not intentional. I didn't see, no, I didn't see, I didn't see nipple, just the drop shadow. Yeah. yeah, I mean, there's two schools of thought of that, right? It, we, we first started with a font that was like lowercase and pretty easy to read, and it started to feel pretty kind of general internet era to us. It wasn't really distinctive, and we wanted to create some distinctiveness to it. I just kind of fell in love with this font that our creative agency came up with, and the fact that, you know, you take a little extra time to look at the font, it's maybe not such a bad thing. Who's the agency? Uh, VMG Creative. What percentage of consumers do you think really understand what you're trying to do with the ripple effect? Oh, a pretty, pretty small proportion of them at first. But I think when you're building a brand, it's important to build a brand that has layers and, and depth that you can go to as you become more engaged in the product line and, and, and in the brand. And so for us, it might not be the door you walk through, the carbon footprint, water savings and all of that. It might be, but for most people it's not but it becomes something that unfolds as another reason why uh, you should stay with the brand over time. I see you switched nutritious pea milk to nutritious plant-based milk. Have you seen an immediate lift from that? Uh, none that we can, we can tell, but it's really about this shift of the category away from what's the ingredient to actually what do I want out of my milk. What individual PR marketing or media moment hit thing has been the most impactful so far? Uh, being on Colbert on the late show with Stephen Colbert. He um, made fun of the fact that our product was a pea milk. Um, and we got uh, you know him, his face and the little screen and he spent about a minute basically making fun of us. It was fantastic. We saw like a 50% lift across the board in every retailer that day. If you could redo Ripple again, knowing what you know now, what would you have changed? Yeah, I think there was some stuff from a technology standpoint that I would have made sure was a little bit more sealed and ready for prime time before scaling the business really quickly. So we raised quite a bit of money and we've used that money to do the technology that kind of underpins the brand. But we did get the growth of the business a little bit out ahead of the technology. And I think that staging those things a little bit better would, would be probably what I would change. Do you think you approach this business with uh, an unsafe amount of confidence given your last success? I'm really cognizant of that. It's been interesting that none of the problems are any less stressful, but the second time around you've seen them. So dealing with them is a little bit less personal. And so, but I am conscious, like I, I don't wanna be too confident, like, oh, I've seen this before. You know, I know what to do here. You, you do have to take a little bit of time and just say, okay, you know, you gotta make sure you're not, you know, smoking your own, your own stuff. Do you feel like you might've raised too much money? You know, I don't know the answer to that question. I think only time will tell. I, I don't think so because we've had to do some really fundamental science work. 
How do you define your category? Right now, we mostly define it as the broader plant-based milk category, or what's often called plant-based beverages. But we also look at the dairy segment because the real big opportunity for Ripple Foods is really similar to what we did with Method, which is to mainstream a product that's plant-based. Method sort of mainstreamed a green cleaning product. And the way you do that is by making a product that can actually compete with the mainstream product in this case, on taste and nutrition. And we're the only brand that has the same protein content as milk and has that rich, creamy texture of milk as well. So uh, we do pay attention to the non-dairy, or the dairy category, but you know what we need to slug out every day for shelf space is with the, with the other non-dairy guys. What advice would you give someone who wants to start a beverage? Don't. <laughs> When did the idea become a business? The idea really started with my co-founder who developed this way of getting pure protein out of plants. Um, protein's flavorless, so if it's pure, it doesn't have any flavor. He, he was kind of tooling around with that in the lab, and it was really when we kind of put two and two together that the non-dairy space is this large growing space that lacks the primary nutritional and taste benefits of what they replace, essentially, non-dairy milks are terrible alternatives to dairy like they you know they don't have protein they don't taste very good so when we when we sort of saw that we had this technology that could unlock a product experience that wasn't in the category yet that's when it really became a business have you seen any copycat yeah definitely i mean anytime you launch something in the into a consumer segment and it's successful you'll you'll see copycats we've seen them you mentioned oatly within two months of oatly coming into this market there were five oat brands right S some of them from the big guys so yeah we've seen people uh, silk launched a, a copycat pea based product and then a couple of other brands you know did similar stuff um we've now seen two of those brands go by the wayside so again it's all about good food if you create great taste and nutrition that's how you create an enduring proposition what are you going to do to make up for the fact that there's not a natural born branding marketer here which is a huge part of the entire proposition yeah. to the consumer hire one is the answer so uh we're actually in the process of hiring a, a chief marketing officer now that will be the person responsible for doing the things that i just talked about and making that shift from sort of feature and benefit to really building a brand adam thank you so much for coming on i'm ian wishing and we'll see you next time on i'm with the brand